Welcome to the city of Xiamen in Fujian, China for the 2024 CND Xiamen Marathon. As a World Athletics Elite Platinum label race for the sixth year now, this year's Xiamen Marathon will still be one of the biggest in China here at the Xiamen International Conference and Exhibition Center, which serves as the start and finish for the race. The elite men's and women's runners are all ready for this at the start line. I can see some big names from the men's and women's field in there. 2022 world champion Gautiem Gebre Selassie from Ethiopia. We get to Alem and Ruti Aga in the women's field. Defending champion Philemon Kiptu Kipchumba. Kibiwit Kandi and Chalu Deso from Ethiopia on the men's side. Behind them, as you can see, five waves of the main body. The theme for this year's edition is Run Together, and it comes with a new drive for the marathon, sustainable development, in line with World Athletics and United Nations goals to encourage sustainable development in all areas, production, consumption, climate change, and carbon neutrality. Yet another great movement forward for this very famous running event. VIPs, many from the LOC and CAA on hand to get proceedings underway. And the runners in their thousands ready for their 42.195 km to run. Some 30,000 runners taking part today. And we're almost ready to get underway now. Just waiting for the starter's gun. And they are off. The 2024 CND Xiamen Marathon is up and running. Great to see so many runners back in Xiamen for what is a very, very special run in China. So the runners just leaving the convention center grounds and onto Huizhan Road, which is almost a slip road. And we'll take them onto Huandao, which is the main body of the first part of the course. As we can see from the helicopter that will be bringing us not just the aerial views of the leaders in the men's and women's races, but also some of the great areas and attractions from the wonderful city of Xiamen. Of course, every year weaved in and around some great historical sites and conservation areas. Always a big part of the marathon to integrate with the city itself. And as expected, it only took them a minute or so for the top runners already edging forward here to lead. Good view looking down Huizhan Road. Of course here at Xiamen has very wide roads with a smooth asphalt surface. It makes it perfect for a large number of runners. So making that turn now onto Huizhan Road. A bit of moisture on the course as you can see from early morning dew. Thousands of runners behind them. And there's the confirmation of a record number participating once again. 30,000 runners five waves always a wonderful sight to see here at the start and these wonderful scenes of runners flooding through the start line will be continuing on for quite a while i can tell you look at that an absolute army of runners as we see every year here in jamen and here they are the leaders Getting into their stride already now, still in their opening kilometer and heading slightly downhill on their way to Huandao East Road. Front runners looking to settle into an efficient, fast running style early. So important to get up to your peak running speed as soon as possible, especially when there are such strong contenders in the field with you. Leaders beginning to pull away slightly, followed by an endless train of runners and red shirts behind them. Motos on hand as always as we get some closer side analysis. Top seven here all running strongly already, working off some of the nerves I'm sure from waiting to start, but all with a good tall upright position. Marathon running now back to its peak after slowing down in 2020 and 2021. 170 marathons in China last year, this year more expected. And as always, the season kicks off right here with one of the biggest and best in Xiamen. So making the turn onto Huanda Road and that's Benson in Zioki Mutiso leading just next to three paces. Early leader. And that's what's happening behind him. Still on Huizan Road. And looking good so far off the start. 
and that's a wonderful shot to start from the helicopter. You can see that Jamen coastline coming into play, roughly four minutes in, showing good pace. Front runners at just over three minutes per kilometer, and that's their target for sure. That's the time for a good finish if you can maintain it. Still all tightly punched up. Here come the elites. Just past 1K now. Big names in there, and just behind them to be the national Chinese runners. All made a good start this morning. Weather is good, 15 degrees might be a little chilly, but with clear skies and bright sun, it will feel hotter for the runners today. And there they are, the elites now settling into a proper rhythm as they approach two kilometers. Still Mutiso up front with those three paces, but I can see the big names in there just behind them. That's their opening stretch of road. On now, road just follows the coastline and makes up a big part of this wonderful course. Take a look at the elite men taking part today. Defending champion Philemon Kiptu Kipchumba will have to watch out for the likes of Othman El Gumri and Chaludeso. But as expected, Kenya and Ethiopia stars all over the men's entry list. High quality field today. Back with the men as they power through these opening kilometers. Runners still just on East Wandao Road heading west. You can already see a gap increasing between the front pack and the rest of the main body. Just crossing 4.5 kilometers. And let's check in with the course for this year's edition. After leaving the convention exhibition center, it's west onto the coastal Huanda Road, passing some famous shaman landmarks, the Sifit Golden Key, Zhenchuan Fishing Village at Nine, Jaman University in the Shimao Towers. Then it's a cut back inland on Lujang Avenue using Hubin South Road for the turn back point and 19 kilometers. Then it's back on Huanda, heading east this time, sticking to the coast past Gulangyu Island, Yanwu Bridge for a second time. Then the Hulishan and Baishi Fortresses up to 30 kilometers. Yifeng Shai Beach 35, passing the convention center again on their left this time, as they head for the second turn back point at the Zhangshan Yacht Club. Then it's the last three kilometers back and into the convention center. A wonderful course. And it's been in use now for a great many years. Once again, the weather great for running today. But will it be good enough to produce race records? We shall have to see. Holding steady at 60 humidity and a cool 15 degrees with the sun already rising. And that's going to hit these runners hard a little bit later on. They've just hit one of the many gradients here at Jamen. See, by the way, the pack broke up and took a lateral formation for a while. So each of them can attack that slope individually more head-on so a pack of 16 runners to kick off here and I can see a Beto Tesfai and Felix Kewa in there as well all settled nicely behind Benson Mutiso this is the Golden Key Junction at five kilometers built to commemorate a national trade and investment event held in Jamen annually the China International Fair for Investment and Trade the sculpture symbolizing the Golden Key of international investment and economic cooperation. So at the seven kilometer mark for the lead runners right now, and that pack hasn't broken down yet. Still Mutiso in the lead, three paces around him. And Othman El Gumi has now settled in behind them. And that's a great view looking down Wanda Road. You can just see those gradients that these runners will have to face today. The gradients may not be severe here in Jamen, but they are numerous. And as the roads wind around, also rise and fall just enough to cause that incremental buildup of fatigue and on the lower joints especially. Great shot there from the heli. Still on that coastal road. Eight kilometers past now. The leaders are heading uphill again. All the 
looking solid so far. Checking back in with the main body of runners and it still smiles all around. A lot of running clubs from the city of Xiamen and beyond registered today. Great to see these guys and girls out having fun. And that's a beautiful shot of the Shima Towers over the bay from the helicopter. Sun very much shining now. Mutisa now taking on some water just past the 10 kilometer mark. So important to keep hydrated, especially on days like this. And there is that famous coastal road. Great shot from the helicopter. Such a great running environment. Lush forest on one side, the beach and coastal scenics on the left. Checking in with the women now. They are just approaching 9.5 kilometers, which puts them on the headland, just in front of the Baishi Fortress, another famous historical site in Xiamen. And I can see the front three in that pack of men, Aberu Mulisa. Zeray Bazab. Melissa's personal best, a 221.54 in Seville last year. There she is. And Bazab, a 229.15 in FA back in 2019. Both off to a good start here and starting their first ascent up one of those early gradients on Wandao. As you can see the natural formation again. That's Jamin University. This is the main campus of four has an extensive portfolio of international collaborations, including an international cooperative program for innovative talents funded by the China Scholarship Council. Men's leaders just before the 12 kilometer mark, and you can see from there the undulating road surface that they are running on. Just micro changes, but that can make all the difference and really affect your pace if you don't anticipate them and work them into your flow. This is one of the highest elevations on the course at the start of the Yanwu Bridge and they will be heading downhill for the next five odd kilometers. Still a very long way to go in this race, so it's not that critical to be in the lead right now in the grand scheme of things. And that's where they are right now, just entering that looping intersection at the Yanwu Bridge. So heading to the Shimao Tower Complex, you can see that gradient on the bridge, constant pressure on the legs as they approach Shima Tower and the looping intersection there. That circles the base of both towers. And then it's roughly four kilometers to the turn inland at Lujang Avenue. The pack loosening slightly, as you'd expect, on these hilly sections of the course. This is where good results can be made or broken, and it's crucial to be able to shift into an uphill gear when needed. And that's a wonderful shot of the Yangu Bridge not just a great two-way running surface, also has a lot of history attached to it. Clear running space for the leaders. Lots of cool breezes coming in from the sea to help cool off. Also a great place for tourists to take a pic with the ocean as a backdrop. Right now, Benson Mutiso is still leading with no clear gap. And behind them, back on Huandao Road, just an endless supply of runners back on the course today. Competitors from all walks of life and backgrounds taking part however they can. They're giving it their all and they're giving their all with a smile on their faces as well. Great to see. Back with the men and they're at 15 kilometers, which should place them just by the side of Zhongshan Road. This is the water station at 15 kilometers, deep in the city center now. And heading towards the turn back point, that's up at 19 kilometers. You can see the fatigue of mid-race coming into play. Benson Utisa now has a clear challenger and that looks to be Kiptu Kipchumba, last year's winner of course and with a personal best of 205.35 set in Shanghai last year. And he's being flanked by Kibiwood Candy and Othman Algumi by the looks of it, left and right. So the lead pack splitting into two now, top four and the rest. And those runners still on Wandao Road, really filling up the road now. So looking at the 15 kilometer split times and still less than a second between the top five. All of the top five still running at a good solid pace though. On course at this point for a good finish. Kipchumba hanging in there. All be looking for a negative split strategy. So a faster second half of the race. Just biding their time behind Benson and Tisa right now, all showing no problems so far in this race.
And time to check in with both the leading groups now. Men on the left, women on the right, and on the course are the women roughly two kilometers back from the men. The men just passing 17 kilometers. So the men on Hubin Road now are heading east, and the ladies about to make the turn onto Louis Jean Avenue. Staying with the women's leading pack now at 15 kilometers, and they are just at the water station. And that's a slightly awkward take from our leader, Beru Melissa. The take of hydration needs to be just as fluid as the water itself, really. You do have to hydrate, but it's crucial not to lose momentum while doing it. She's back up to speed now, but you can see how she had to drop back. That looks like Bekalec Gudetta Borecha from Ethiopia there, whose personal best is a 222.56, picked up a couple of years ago. She's now fighting for the lead with Melissa. And that's the leading Chinese lady, Zhang Deshun, making the most of the water stop in third spot. So it's close at 15 kilometers in the ladies competition, running in this pack of men. Such a huge difference mentally between isolation and pack running for any runner on half or full marathons. And that mental state directly links to your pace too. You can tune out a lot of your mind if you sync with the pack. It's really, it's trying to stick with a pack that's too fast for you is worse than no pack at all. Lots of theories as to whether it helps. Most agree it does. And if you're getting dropped by your pack, it's very easy to become disheartened and focus on that. So Berecha, well, that's Melissa right now just edging forward into the lead good solid running form shown by all these ladies so far good upright position an arm swing shoulders a nice straight line of course keeping the head up to keep that airway open so you get the most amount of oxygen into your vo2 max engine and that's what it's all about that energy producing engine in your body has to be maximized at all times. There's Beretcha right next to her. Just making their way now. Just past 15 kilometers. And here are the 15 kilometer splits for the women's race. Nothing between Melissa, Beretcha, and Bezap. And it's the Moroccan Fatima Gardadi who is in fourth, her and Deshun in fifth, a little way back from the leading three. And you can just see there some of the residual moisture on the course. That's too big to be from hydration sprays. That's natural. And of course, a slightly different running style needed to combat any loss of traction. Can't afford any sort of slipping. Pack did well to pick that center line on the road. Dealt with it well enough and all still looking strong. Retcha now the leader, she's made her move well, and it looks like Melissa has now had to settle back and let her through. Still very tight though it looks like in the women's competition. Head down here now. So to the men's race, and they are just approaching the turn back point, well onto Hubin South Road now, less than one kilometer from here to the turn. Looks like a pack of nine again in the front pack. These top runners will now be focusing on that loop back and thinking how best to execute it at pace. So important to get this turn right. Smooth, controlled and executed well. And they make the turn. And as they start their second half of the race, now heading back to the coast on Huben West Road, it's the Kenyan, Kiru Kandi who is matching Benson and Tiso looks like stride for stride in the lead. Kip to Kip Chumba still on his right. Kibi Watt in the back top chasing a 204-48 which he claimed in Valencia last year. That's the main body of runners, fair intensity of runners everywhere now. And this is one of the beautiful scenic ecological reserves in Jamen, the lush Dongshan Reservoir. Great place to relax and unwind and get away from it all. Men's leading pack, pack still about nine strong at the hydration stop. Stretching a bit here as they head back towards the coastal Huanda Road, which this time will be heading west for them, of course. Taking up position in the middle of the road now. And this will prove a test as they all know what's coming up. Those gradients and undulations around Yanbu Bridge. That's what's next for them. And the pack looks to be closing up again. All of them with smooth takes 
at the drink stop here at 20 kilometers. And that's the Jime School Village, built by a prominent businessman, Tan Ka Ki, back in 1913. 12 schools constructed in this area since then. Attracts a lot of tourists, not only for the famous schools, but also for this wonderful, beautiful natural scenery. And we're back with the men, and it's downhill stretch at 21 kilometers, just before the turn onto Huandao Road. Downhill, which can help. You can settle into an auto rhythm and let gravity help you a bit. Easier to lean forward in your running style too, but it's really about keeping that pull downhill from taking control. A lot of importance here on the Achilles and ankles. Achilles is such an important part of a runner's body. A full marathon works out to about 40,000 full force acceleration steps. Full impact on all the joints, but in the middle of all of it, you need a functional, flexible and reliable Achilles. Women's race now approaching the turning back point on Hubin South Road, heading towards the Zhongshan Hospital. And it looks like Brecha still bossing this small pack of ladies. All look to be running strongly. About to hit the turn. And around the turn back point, they all go again. Just making sure that it's done right mistakes in such a big pack with the deceleration and sun direction change but all through well here is Brecha in the black outfit Melissa still with her and Zhang Dishan looks just to be in the back there in third spot all made the turn well and still have this group of male runners to essentially set the pace for them so a good, comfortable running situation for the ladies so far. And a helicopter now over Bailujo Park on the banks of the Yundang Lake. Lots of lush trees full of winding paths. Lots of open air musical plaza as well. Wonderful place to visit. And there is a statue, the eagle goddess. You can just see standing at the Don Marine, the back of the park. Wonderful tourist attraction here in Jarmen. So back with the men at 22 kilometers. Benson Mutiso still going strong at the front. And there's that bright sun now playing a factor here. Heating up the skin, plus adding some extra glare. And this is the point where these male elites will be turning back into the coast road. That's the Jimei Bridge, starting from the intersection of Huandao Road and Wuxi Road in the south, crossing the Zhunjiang Sea. Built in 2006, it connects Jamen Island and Jimei Peninsula in Jamen City, one of 58 bridges in Jamen. It's not on the course, but it's a great view for these runners. If they can focus on that, of course, almost at 23 kilometers now, and you can see the effect of the bright sun, a little more labored in their running styles, but Benson Mutiso, Still pushing through, and that looks like Felix Kerwa who has pushed out wide. All the men heading west on Zongshan Road now, and you can see that moisture on the road drying up very quickly as the sun heats up the course. There's a good shot of that right there. And behind them, the main body of runners still in high spirits all over the course right now. Some will be looking for their own personal best, but most will just be out to have a fun morning. That's the Jime University, a public campus of around 21,000 students, around 2,000 teachers. Also built by Tan Ka Ki as early as 1918. Oh, a very important figure in Jime history. The motto of this great school, sincerity and fortitude. Fantastic. So back with the leading men. Now back on the Yanwu Bridge heading east. Obviously you can't see the subtle inclines and declines of the course from above. And we are back to ground level with the men once again facing another tough climb as they home in on 25 kilometers. You can see the effect of it. A little bit more ragged in terms of their form. Remember, it's solid climbing all the way to 28 kilometers on this return leg. And that's the exact stretch they are on from the helicopter. Heading out to one of the most famous attractions actually here at Jamen. And that is the famous Gulangyu Island or Kulangsu, which 
which the runners are passing now. Although only about 20,000 people live there, but it is a major domestic tourist destination, attracting more than 10 million visitors per year, making it one of China's most visited tourist attractions. It also has the highest piano ownership per capita in China, so it's lovingly known as the Island of Pianos. A lot of rich musical history concentrated on that island, I can tell you. Wonderful place. So, still a leading pack of seven, including two paces in the men's, but it's still Benson Mutiso up front, and that's where he has been since the start. Safer Kebaba, Felix Kerwa still keeping pace with him. But it looks like Kibiwat Candy has fallen victim to this incline. All still showing good running form, good arm swing, upright position, head up to keep the airways as free as possible, and good cadence to that movement. Looking strong so far, well past the halfway mark. On the other side of the Yanu Bridge, you can see the legion of runners from the main body still making their way west to the first turning point on Huben Road. The entire course at this point, pretty much full of runners. Everywhere you look, and most wearing the brand new gear and apparel designed specially for this year using sustainable materials and production in line with that sustainable development aim for this year's race. Quick looking on the other side, smiles still being seen there on the many faces as the main body of runners keeps heading towards the turn back point. But it's all about focus on the east heading side. That pack of seven leading runners in the men's field stretching out a bit more. Mutiso still powering ahead, but now Othman El Gumi is into a consolidated second spot ahead of Felix Kiwa in the purple shorts. Othman will be looking to better his 205.12 personal best that he clocked in last year in Barcelona. So far, based on this pace, we might just get to see something close to the record. Those records have held for quite a few years here in Jamen. Have to see if history is made in these last 16 odd kilometers. Great view there of the Yanwu Bridge. And we're back with the women's event and a bit of repositioning in this pack containing the leading lady Berecha, probably readying themselves for that same incline that the men faced ahead of them. Now, all the way to 28 kilometers is uphill for this pack. So, a slightly slower pace needed, cutting back on stride length, shorter stride. Increased power of the arm swing, trying to stay relaxed and maintain as tall a posture as possible. And eyes up, looking to the crest of the hill, not at the feet. But Berecha, the only lady in that pack now, as Melissa's charge looks to have faded. So all Berecha has to do now is stay focused and finish, as she is way ahead of the likes of Fatima Gardadi, Melissa, and Zhang Dashun. And there is Abira Ayana Melissa, still running well enough has fallen off the pace and the lead and you can see how she is trying but that pace has left her or at least not a matched pace for Berecha and you can see how far back she's dropped off now Berecha pushed hard and won through that mini battle there once again the incredible Shimao towers that really do dominate the Xiamen skyline with their sail inspired design such a great running environment to run past beautiful buildings like that so Bekelech Borecho only has the male runners in that pack as company now as they pass the towers and hit a small downhill stretch on the Yanwu bridge looking back at the turning point now on Hubin Road that's at the 19.5 kilometer mark hundreds of them now making the turn Still lots of energy and smiles to be seen from all of them. Having a great morning out today. And they don't have to be too efficient, of course, with their entry and exit to that turn. Obviously, for them, it's just the next landmark on a fun course to be enjoyed by all. The Elite's race is special, no doubt, but the heart of the Xiamen Marathon every year always lies with these main body runners, whatever level they may be. Back with the elites now and from the heli we can see them still heading east on the Yanwu Bridge, drenched in sunlight. There's been no cloud cover all this morning, clear blue skies and direct sun. And we're staying with Bekelech Borecha still nicely embedded right in the center of that pack of male runners. They have been great pace keepers for her for sure. And you can see the 
and she's had no respite from the bright sun. Look at that, always better to have cooler conditions for running. Firex Sun makes that body temperature skyrocket. That can really affect your hydration strategy. So far though, she's still looking pretty strong. Time to check in with the 25 kilometer splits for the women and that's the official confirmation of the top three. Melissa and Gardardi over 30 seconds back at this point. It's just been relentless play pace from Bereccia. And that's the terrain ahead. A heli heading west just over Yufengzhai Beach it looks like. So that's at about 34 kilometers. Checking back in with the men and as they hit the 30 kilometer mark it's Mutiso all on his own. You can just see the chasing pack some distance behind him. Question is, can Benson maintain this electric pace he's shown so far in the last 12 kilometers? He's been strong. And there we can see the chasing pack. That's Othman El Goumi in second, just ahead of Kiwa in third. Back on flatter ground now since the 28 kilometer mark, making their way back up Wanda Road. And that's the turn for them. That sweeping headland just ahead. At 31 kilometers now, and it looks like the pacemaker Benson Mutisu has run his race as he falls back, meaning our new top three has emerged. So the last split times with Benson on top, and you can see just how close the race we have now between Boki, El Gormi, Kiowa, and Yego in fourth. Ofman El Gormi now has to be the favorite, you'd think, the Moroccan record holder, one of, if not the fastest runners to come from that country. And there he is. Good section of the course for him to be making a move on. And that looks like Felix Kerwa is now just edged ahead. And that is the amazing Jaman Jamin Shanghai Healthy Trail. Sorry, it's about 23 kilometers long in total. Along the route, eight mountains, three waters, Jinshan, the Lakeside Reservoir, and Wuyan Bay. No ground vehicle traffic allowed there with multiple viewing platforms on the entire trail. Amazing place. So back with our new top three and as you can see it's the Kenyan Felix Kipto Okowa who has summoned up a charge and pushed himself into the lead. The Ethiopian Asefa Boki is in second. He's done very well today just biding his time in the pack and lasting through to this business end of the race. And behind him Morocco's Othman Al Gumi. Great to have three different nations represented in the top three today. They're just approaching Xiamen's famous 99 marathon sculptures, which puts them just alongside Yafengzhai Beach. And it looks like it could be a spectacular finish here today. And that's where they are from the heli. Slightly uphill section of Huandao Road, so definitely feeling the pressure on the whole body at this late stage. As the top three take a quick look over their shoulders, you can see that road gradient again. So slight, so subtle, and it packs quite a punch to the legs at this stage. Still could be a good shot of the records here though. But all three will need to push even harder right now. The records have stood for quite a while. The Chinese runners, it's uh, Xiamen Marathon race record is 210.43 held by Deng Haiyang, set in 2008. And the race record for women is 222.38, created by Zhang Yingying, Ying, also in 2008. For these international elites here, it's even faster. Moses Mossop from Kenya for the men with a 206.19 and Mari Dibaba from Ethiopia with a 219.52 for the ladies, both set in 2015, which on record is officially the fastest run in the over 20 year history of the Jamin Marathon. Amazing. And as we watch, Othman Al Gumi sees his chance and snatches the lead. So just over six kilometers left now and they are passing those famous 99 marathon statues. Each sculpture here in this group of sculptures is about two meters high and made of cast copper. The sculpture group is divided into three groups, one for each type of athlete from professional to amateur. Another reminder of how ingrained this marathon is into the city of Jamen itself. And for the runners, it's a welcome landmark as they know how close they are now to the second turn back point and the final three kilometers of the race. That's the stretch they're on right now. And we can see it from the helicopter, the uh, Zhangshan Yacht Club up in the distance. 
That's the location of the second and final turn back point. And it looks like Othman Al Gumi has fallen back now. No sign of him at 36.7, meaning Felix Kiowa is our new leader with a Sefer Boki in second, still within the striking distance, just running over 3.05 per kilometer. That's a great pace at this stage of the marathon. So everything heating up in the men's competition. And I'm sure we're in for a spectacular finish. And as the heli circled back, that's a great view of the coast. And we can check in with the women's event again, just past the 33 kilometer mark for them. So about three kilometers back from the leading men, just alongside the sands of Yifeng Jai Beach and heading to those marathon sculptures. It's still Bekalech Borecha looking good so far. She has been in a league of her own for some time now, now running with about five male runners around her to act as the pace makers. That group used to be around 10, but now we get a clearer view of her running style. It's looking solid. Good posture, shoulders, head upright, great arm swing. Looking very hydrated and very few signs of fatigue. Not long for her to go now. As you can see, Melissa and Gardadi and Zhang, second, third, and fourth, absolutely nowhere to be seen. Amazing effort and consistent pace from the Ethiopian Berecha. And at this pace, still on target to at least match her personal best, which is a 222.56 set in Prague in 2022. She's done the hard part and fought off her rivals. Now it's about conquering herself and pushing through. So far, no significant problems though. Checking with the main body again, some views and smiling faces. Everyone's still enjoying themselves here at the Jarman Marathon 2024. Just passing the Straight Grand Theatre now, the center for all the TV, arts and film industry in Jarman. It's a beautiful design and built structure right beside the convention and exhibition center massive as well as you can see we get a lovely shot from the helicopter back with the men and it's into the final five kilometers for felix skiptu and a safer boki both still separated by a matter of feet and with the final turn back point looming ahead of them there is every chance that things could change here if either of these runners loses ground on that turn or the final stretch at this point every muscle and sinew must be burning for both of these guys they put in such a superhuman effort and you can just see how far off Al Gumi has fallen back in third spot so difficult to maintain race pace and he's tried his very best there's a different race for him now as he has to just focus on finishing himself and claiming that third spot there's the turn back point once again has to be a perfect entry and exit both of them through nicely and if you thought the last turn back point at Cuban Road needed to be executed perfectly, well, this one had to be even more precise. But it actually looks like the Ethiopian Asefa Boki made the better turn as he's almost pulled alongside Kiwa now. They are side by side as they make their way to the final section. Turn onto Huishan Road, that will be about a kilometer before they turn towards the finish line. One last burst of cool vapor from those hydration sprays. And the crowds and volunteers cheering them on as they go. That's the motivation for Kiro, it seems, as he edges back into the lead. Under three kilometers left now and time to use whatever energy they have left for one final push. Just passing the Straits Grand Theatre for the final time. This time it's on their right side. That's the final landmark. We've seen some dramatic finishes here in Xiamen in these last three kilometers over the last two decades. And we might see another today. And if these two runners left and manage to keep any reserve energy in the tank, then they will be looking to feed that into their feet for sure. It looks like Rocky's now trying to push. He's closed up a little. He knows that he needs to keep pace stride for stride right here if he has any plans of making one final charge. There's Offman Al Gumi in third spot, some way back now. Looks about 15 to 20 seconds back from the front two, but he seems to have settled into a good finishing pace. He can be happy with his overall performance today. He was our leader on a couple of occasions and executed his negative split strategy well enough. Certainly slightly faster in the second half. The top spot on that podium looks beyond him now. A 
At this pace though, he should finish just outside the 205 personal best of his set in Barcelona. From the helicopter, we can see the front two have now made that turn onto Huijan Road. Seems so long ago now that they were last here right at the start of the race. But now, it must be a welcome sight for both of them. Still absolutely nothing between them. Just over one kilometer left. What a finish we're seeing to this Xiamen Marathon for 2024. You can tell both these runners have managed their energy really, really well. Kiwa and Boki taking up wide positions on the road. Boki is powered through. Kiwa looking a little bit labored now. He might have enough energy to finish, but it's starting to look like he might not have enough energy to charge. And that's exactly what Boki looks to be doing. What a race from Asefa Boki Kibaba. Just had that extra bit of reserve tucked away for when it counts. Sat back behind the leaders. Was never a leader himself for the 41 kilometers up to this point. But has executed just a perfect strategy, it looks like, here in Jamen. He's now really stretching away. It looks like Kiwa is trying to summon up one final charge, but he's dropping back. He's at least three or four foot behind now. even moving to about five or six feet so the Sefa Boki sensing his chance there's a reminder of that race record 20619 by Moses Mosso back in 2015 they're gonna be just outside that it looks like but very close into the final turn and Felix Kiwa just can't seem to break into that six foot lead that Boki has managed somehow to pull out of the bag. All since the second turn back point when they were neck and neck. Looks like he's trying again here. But still, Asefa remains resolute and in position. Into the convention center grounds now. That's the final turn for them. It's the home stretch. There's no way Kiowa can catch up now. This is going to be Boki's race. And he snatched it within the last two kilometers. The gap gets bigger. Asefa Boki Kebaba is on a sprint. Kiowa knows it's going to be second place. As Asefa keeps his focus and crosses the line with a 2.06.46. Kiowa comes through as well, just six seconds behind him with a 2.06.52. Incredible finish from the two front runners. And they can now settle back on some good times that they've set today. And there's Othman Al Gumi. He's still running well on the final stretch. It's a great effort from him, solid and consistent. And he crosses the line with a 207.18, about two minutes off his personal best, and about 20 seconds off the leader's pace. Great run today. So with the men's race done and three different nationalities occupying the top three positions, we can let those men cool off and get ready for their trophies while we check in with the women's competition. And it's still Berecha powering ahead in the lead. She's now alone and running in isolation. As the pack of men around her has vanished and approaching the final turn back point by the Zhangshan Yacht Club. Almost at the 40 kilometer mark, still looking very strong. Zero signs of fatigue from the Ethiopian. So Ethiopia now on course for a double win here at Jamen this year. They won last year, of course, in the women's with Meseret Elemu. And in total, should she finish, and I'm sure she will, she will be the 13th Ethiopian winner in the women's competition since the first race in 2003 13 ethiopian wins in 21 editions incredible production of runners from that country all she has to do is keep going at this point looking very good for the win so here she comes to the turn and she's round that turn well with just that one male runner to keep her company it's all about a hundred percent focus now 
and keeping your running form as intact as possible, even though every muscle in your body is burning and telling you to stop. Not far to go now, just under three kilometers. This was the stretch of road that was used to such great effect by her countryman, Asefa Boki. It was from this point that he started to edge ahead of Felix Kiowa. No such problem for Bekelec Goretzscher. She can run at 90% if she wanted to do from here. Being so close to possibly beating her personal best, I'm sure she's going to try and push herself to the max. She's about two minutes or more off the course record. That's 2.19.52, set by another Ethiopian, Mari Dababa, in 2015. And you really see now at this stage exactly how fast a run that was by Dibaba. This is where she is right now, running to the left of the Jamen Financial District, the CBD, Central Business District, that sits on the edge of the Jamen International Convention and Exhibition Center, just further east of it. And she will be happy that she's under no pressure whatsoever, so she can take it at the pace she needs to before the final push. She's seen off all the challenges over the distance, and there were a few. She's outpaced them all and not missed a beat while doing it. Absolutely brilliant performance from Bekelec Kudata Borecha. And that's how close she is to the final section. You can see the wonderful Straits Grand Theatre in the distance. We turn back off the coastal road onto Huijan Road just past that. And it's roughly a kilometer before she turns into the convention center grounds. It's now a mental fight with herself, mind against body. So different from a situation where you have another runner that you can focus on, much like the finish of the men's race today. Now approaching the turn back onto Huijan Road and incredibly, it actually looks like she's picked up the pace. She's caught up a bit with the male runner ahead of her. This could be her final push to break her personal best. But even if she doesn't break her personal best, it's still been a fantastic, dominating performance from the Ethiopian. Absolutely untroubled from pretty much the 20th kilometer on. Still looking to push the pace there. She is closing up again. That male runner. What a wonderful performance we've seen from her today. There's the turn on to Huijan. That's the race record of Mari Dababa. She's not beating that today. And so that lives to reign for another year. The sun's still beating down here. It really hasn't had a break all day. All the runners have really outdone themselves, elites or amateur, in dealing with that sun. And now, well onto Huijan Road, as you can see from the helicopter. Just one more corner left for her. She is our clear women's leader by a long way, but no signs of slowing down or letting her head down. She knows this will still be a great time, much faster than the rest. Still moving well, feeling great. And she knows she's going to do this. She's just oozing confidence at this point. So she makes the turn. And she's into the final stretch. She's never looked like falling off the pace, even when pushed by the likes of Mulisa, or Bezab, or Gardadi. From start to midway to now finish. In fact, she really set her own pace. So just closing in on the convention center. Now past and into the turn, into the convention center grounds, and into the finish straight. She's through the corner. Looking as strong as she has for some time now, absolutely unstoppable. She's outlasted the best and there is nothing to trouble her as she makes this final dash home. What a performance today from Becca Lech, Dato Borecha. Into the final 50 odd meters now. And there's no way that She's going to be slowing down or pushing right till the end. And she is through with a 2.22.54. Great performance. Just two seconds slower than her personal best in the end. Amazing consistency of results from this Ethiopian lady. 
So a double Ethiopian win secured in men's and women's here in Jamen. Now it's just a question of making sure second and third finish in the women's division. We have to wait a little while for them to cross the line. As we look at the start finish line, there is Fatima Ezahara Gardadi on the finishing straight. She made a good go of it this morning, was fighting for the lead at times, just couldn't maintain race pace in the last 15 odd kilometers. And looks to be finishing strong regardless. She's all smiles. And she crosses the line over a minute after Berecha with a 2.24.12, which is her new personal best by over a minute. So congratulations in order for Fatima Gardadi. That's what it's all about here in Jamen. Good course for success. Might not be a win over everyone, but it could still be a win for yourself and your running career. So first and second in. And now here comes third place and it's Zhang Deshun powering home on the finishing straight. So she will take third on the international podium, but also take the top spot as the lead female Chinese runner. Strong performance from her. She finishes about two minutes back from Gardadi with a 2.26.53. So men's and women's winners in. And about time now for the prize ceremony for these wonderful athletes. They've put in an absolutely superhuman effort today here in Charmen. It's really the case every year. But this year has been another one of those fast runs. So here is the prize ceremony for the men, all cooled down, out of the sun, something I'm sure they'll be happy about after such a hot race today. There's Asefa Boki, who saved his best for last and made his move in those last three kilometers to take the win. Absolutely magical stuff from him. VIPs on hand, of course, for the prize giving. And they'll be starting with these specially designed medals for this year, designed in the shape of the sun, called Honor of Light. Absolutely beautiful medals. That's my third. Othman and Kiwa in second. And of course, Asefa on top spot. So, next up are these souvenir plaques. For this year's event, also specially designed for the 2024 edition. A little mementos from the day. One to Othman, one to Kiwa. And of course, one to Asefa as well. Next, it's the all new commemorative mascot for this year's race. Thanks to third place, to second, and of course, top spot. Which means there's just one more piece of business for the men's competition. And some might say it's the most important, but of course, really, it's an, it's an extra when it comes to running great times on the World Athletics Marathon courses. It is checks, of course. Increased prize money this year, up to 55,000 US dollars. Top prize money. Such a big purse, but it really is all about those times. So, Hoffman gets his check. Kiwa now will get his. And Asifa with his. So, the prize money in place. 
all the prizes given out. There's a quick photo shoot looks to be happening. There it is. And there's the official confirmation of their timings and placings. Well done to all three men today. So just the prize ceremony for the women's event now. They're all cooled down, changed and ready for their medals, blacks, mascots and of course checks to be given to them by our VIPs on hand. That's Fatima Gandadi. Great run from her. Ooh, watch yourself. Certainly don't want to injure yourself on the trophy presentation <laughs> um, platform. Especially after running 42 kilometers. And there is the resolute form of Bekalec Berecha. Looking just as stern on the prize giving ceremony platform as she did on the course today. So as with the men, first up will be the specially designed Honor of Light medals for the three ladies. Shang De Shun, getting her medal. And Fatima Gadadi. So Morocco with two good finishes on the podium here at Jamen this year. And then fully deserving of that top spot medal. And you see again looking just as focused receiving prizes as she does when she's running. So it's the specially designed plaques up next. One for Zhang. for Fatima and one for Beckletch. That means just like the men's ceremony and it's the big bunny that comes up next. Oh first it's the mascots of course. Mascots before the checks for each of the ladies. And finally, the prize money for each of the women's winners today. Big check for Zhang, big check for Fatima, Gandhari, and top check for the top spot on the podium for Borecha. So a wonderful performance from all our winners today. There's the official confirmation of their timings and placings. Well done to all three ladies for a great race. Let's look back at the highlights now and what a turnout it was earlier this morning on a great day of racing at Jamen. And that's all from us. It's goodbye from me. See you next time. <laughs>